film starts on the planet Dracula 30 centuries ago, where Princess Ella is talking to her father. They're discussing how a criminal named Vlad has been captured and is being considered for the death penalty for feeding on other vampires. He educates Ella on the history of vampires and that Dracula inhabitants used to be like that in years past, but they had organic blood rivers and streams that prevented them from ever having to feed on each other. Ella lets her stepfather know that she's anti-capital punishment and believes that their society is better than that. At Vlad's hearing, his crew breaks in, shoots the council, and before he escapes on a ship to Earth, Vlad feeds on Ella's stepfather. Just as they leave, Ella walks in to see the carnage. Her father's last words to her before dying in her arms was to not seek revenge. So of course, she basically does the complete opposite, but not before flashing her fangs in anger. <laughs> In modern times on Earth, a guy walking down a dark alley with a computer, and I'm talking old school large computer, not modern day laptop, is approached by some muggers. Just then, a female figure appears in the alley trying to translate what they're saying. The muggers threaten her, and she makes quick work of them. The nerdy kid named Fori introduces himself to Ella and invites her over to his place. At Forrest's place, Ella starts rambling about eternity or something when she sees a diagram of space. She then talks about how she did what she had to do and starts naming the members of Drax's gang. Forrest tells Ella that Drax is a famous professor and shows her using the internet. Confusingly, she tells Forrest she used the internet to learn English on the ride to Earth, but clearly skipped trying to actually find any of these people using a search engine because he did it very quickly. Drax is now going by the name Professor Arnold Drax. As she goes to leave to find him, Forrest stops her, letting her know that she's half naked and very distracting, so she probably won't blend in very well. He gives her a black overcoat and tells her not to tell the cops he's involved if she gets caught. She kisses him goodbye, and once she leaves, he names her Vampirella, once he realizes her name is Ella and she's a vampire. At Professor Drax's lab, he tells his wife he'll be late and he can't wait to see her. As he hangs up, Ella appears out of the shadows and tells him how she's there for revenge. He tries to tell her that he and Vlad lost touch years ago and asks her for sympathy, but that changes when she threatens his family. He attacks her, but she gets the upper hand and throws him out a window to his death. <laughs> She then flies to Drax's house and goes through his stuff looking for info on Vlad. When she goes into Drax's kid's room, she sees a poster on a wall. The poster is of a glam rock musician that happens to be Vlad. Ella heads to Vegas and attends Vlad's show, who is now going by the name Jamie Blood. He somehow picks her out of the crowd out of all women there, who knows why. She introduces herself as Vampirella. He forced with her and then the two head out to the beach, unknowingly being followed by vampire hunters. Just before he goes in for a bite, the hunters show up led by Adam Van Helsing and capture Vlad, but not before he knocks Ella out, thinking she's with them. Freeze! You bitch! You set me up! Ella comes to in the back of a van with armed hunters being pretty nasty to her. Vlad hypnotizes the driver of the van to fall asleep, resulting in the van's crashing and their escape. Just before Vlad goes in to buy Van Helsing, Ella stops him and the two almost fight, but after a lot of preaching, he flies off. Before she can go after him, Van Helsing stops her. Back at a hotel, Van Helsing and Vampirella have a political discussion about vampire rights, where she gives a fun fang show before explaining that vampires on Earth are primitive. My rights as a rational being. Is that what you are? <sighs> this is what I am. And this is who I am. One and the same. Then she gives the history of the serum on her arm and how she got to Earth. 
explaining that she hypnotized a Mars exploration crew who found her wrecked ship there to not remember they found her when she was on their ship. Adam takes Ella back to Vampire Hunter headquarters to meet director Owen Walsh. She gives the crew intel that Vlad and his crew have been affected by Earth, resulting in the vampires being like viruses, who can spread vampirism through bite and can't be out in the sun, explaining that she recently landing on Earth doesn't have those issues. Later, Walsh and Van Helsing argue on whether they should trust Vampirella, with Walsh believing she was engineered by Vlad to seduce him, but he sticks to his guns and that she's trustworthy. Back at the hotel, Adam bonds with Ella, the explaining that he had to kill his own father thanks to Vlad turning him, so he gets the whole revenge thing. The story of vampire genocide somehow turns her on, so she goes in for a kiss, but he stops her. She lets him know he can get some whenever he wants, but he leaves. Back at the house, he's met with a topless Playboy model who distracts him long enough for him to get knocked over the head and kidnapped. Director Walsh informs Ella that Van Helsing has been kidnapped and they're demanding a swap for Van Helsing for Vlad's henchman Demos. But Ella has to be the one doing the trade. This makes Walsh even more suspicious of her. When the swap goes down, Ella realizes they were tricked and the atom that they have is a fake. They inform her she isn't innocent either, as she has a tracking device on her. As the hunters begin to shoot, the two sides fly away. Back at Vlad's base, he's holding a meeting with various vampire leaders, where he explains a plan in which they have satellites that they will deploy that will cover the sun and point the Earth into eternal darkness. Meanwhile, Ella goes around looking for Adam, but gets captured in the process. Instead of killing her, he wants her to join them. In order to do that, he locks her in a room with Adam without her serum, hoping to starve her into feeding. Adam comes to and she explains the situation and asks him to chain her up. As he chains her up and she's talking about potentially killing him, this is when he decides that he wants to go in for some romance. Later, as Vlad is giving a rah-rah speech, Ella starts having blood gasms and fangs out. She then breaks out of her chains, but stops herself short of feeding on him. He then decides to give her a scratch on his arm, and she feeds. Stay alive. You won't ask me why I came before. You won't need your old friends anymore. Come on, please call me. Come on to me, come on to me. When the guards come to get her, she takes them down and heads for Vlad. Vlad, thinking she's killed Van Helsing and not knowing she's given their location to the hunters, is happy to see her. He kisses her, but she needs him and then destroys the satellites. The hunters then arrive and ambush the place while Vlad and Ella have an epic chase that leads to Hoover Dam. The fight ends when Ella harpoons Vlad with a metal spike. As he takes it out to throw it back, it's struck by lightning, setting him on fire before falling off the dam. Ella then promises to help the humans, showing them that vampires are not all bad. This was unfortunately the first and last Vampirella would be seen on a screen, as the sequel promised in the film's end credits, titled Death's Dark Avengers, never came to be. What makes matters worse is this originally wasn't even supposed to be the first time Vampirella was to have a film, as the legendary Hammer Studios, makers of several movies featuring hot vampire women, was supposed to be the first to do it in the 1970s. Sadly, the production of the film saw too many hurdles. First, with not being able to land a star due to multiple actresses, including Hammer Legends Caroline Monroe and Valerie Leon, turning it down due to the amount of nudity in the script. Then, when the studio finally got Barbara Lee on board, they had trouble finding American investors, resulting in the movie, and eventually the studio itself being canned. But, we may be in luck. 
In March of 2021, Mike and Pike Productions announced they had reached a deal with Dynamite Entertainment for the movie and television rights to the character, with plans of a feature film version apparently currently in pre-production. So who knows? There may be hope yet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to know when I update and check out the channel playlist, which I regularly update with free vampire media featuring female bloodsuckers available on YouTube.